Hey guys, Taufik here. Now in this video, I will be solving one more real SQL interview query. Now this was a question that was asked by one of the big four accounting firms and it was shared to me by one of my subscribers in my email. Now I believe this is a very common kind of a question that can be asked during SQL interviews. Uh, maybe not the exact question but different variations to similar problem can be asked so definitely check this video until the end okay now straight away let's get into this problem okay so as you can see we have been given a table with three different columns this is having some information about different brands so there are certain records with apple certain records with brand samsung and there are certain records for the brand nokia okay there is a column for year and there is a column for amount Okay, now the problem statement basically tells us that we need to write a query to fetch the record of brand whose amount is increasing every year. Okay, now let's first try to understand what is expected. So basically they are telling us that we need to write a query which is going to display only those brands whose amount has increased every year. Meaning that if I look at the first record here for Apple in 2018, its amount was 45,000. Okay, in 2019, its amount reduced to 35,000. So its amount has decreased from 2018 to 2019 by few thousand right so basically this is not the record or this is not the brand that we need to consider for our output okay so because the amount has decreased from one year to another okay when i come to the brand samsung i can see in 2018 samsung had 15000 in 2019 it increased to 20000 and in 2020 its amount increased to 25000 so looks like samsung is a brand in this table where its amount has increased every single year and when I come to Nokia, I can see that in 2018, the amount was 21,000, 2019, it decreased to 17,000. And then again, in 2020, also it decreased to 14,000. So this uh, brand here, Nokia, its amount has decreased, right? So out of these three brands, if I have to tell that which is the brand whose amount has increased every single year, then it's only this particular brand that is Samsung. So we somehow need to write a query which is going to only return us Samsung. Okay. And the query should not only work for the data that is given here. In general, the query should work for even if this data grip. Now, in order to solve this problem, I have already created the same table in my database. I'm using PostgreSQL. Okay. And this is a PG admin tool. As you can see here, I have created the brands table. It is having the same data here. Okay. Now, before I can solve this problem, uh, let's try to understand whenever you have this kind of a problem, what can be your approach to solve similar problem? Because I'm not making this video just so that I can share with you the solution. But the intention is that I can share with you the approach and the thinking that you need to have whenever you come across similar kind of problems. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to write a query which is going to process every record one at a time. Okay. And when it is processing one record, it should be able to find the amount from the next record. Okay. And then it needs to do a comparison. If the amount in the current record and if the amount in the next record, it's basically increasing, then we can tell that, yeah, this is a successful record, right? We need to have that kind of an approach. Okay. Now, first of all, Whenever we have this kind of a requirement where we are processing a record, but we want to fetch a value from another record, the best function that we can use to fetch the value from the next record is the lead window function, right? Using the lead window function, even when we are processing the first record, we will be able to access any column value from any of the next records, right? So looks like lead window function can be one of the approach or one of the possible solutions for this particular problem. Okay, that's fine. But there is one more thing that we need to consider and that is when we are processing each of this record and when we are looking for the next record, we should not compare between the records if the record belongs to different brands. So when our query is processing the last record for this brand Apple, it should basically not process the next record which might belong to some other brand, right? So meaning that we need to process records which belongs to the same brand separately. So in other words, we kind of need to create a partition for each brand. So one partition for Apple, another partition for Samsung and another partition for Nokia. Okay. And inside that partition, we can use the lead function to compare the current record with the next record. So this can be an approach, but even after doing that, we'll not be able to find the final output. Okay. So for example, let's say as part of our first approach, that is by using the lead window function, we'll just be able to compare the current record with the next record. And if it is successful, then we can put a flag like one. And if it is failure, we can put a flag like zero. 
zero, right? So for example, let's say I'm going to create a column like flag here. Okay, and then I'm going to compare this record that is 45,000 with this 35,000 using the lead function. And here I can say that 45,000 is less than 35,000. So this one, I can make it like zero, okay? When I process the second record and I compare it with the third record, I can tell that 35 is less than 75,000. So this can be one, okay? And when I come to the last record for this particular brand Apple, since there is no next record to compare it with, by default, it should display like one. Okay, something like this. Okay, and the same thing I will do for every other record. So Samsung here, 15 is greater than 20,000. So I'll tell one, 20 is greater than 25,000, again one. And 25,000 is the last record in that partition. There is no, no other record within Samsung to get compared with. Hence, this will by default be one. Okay, when it comes to Nokia, 21 is less than 17. So this will be zero. 17 is less than 14. This will again be zero. And 14, since it's the last record, by default, I'll put it like one. So in my very first step, I need to write a query, which is going to return me a flag for every record, which will look something like this, okay? So once I have got this flag record, then I can filter the data such that I only fetch those brands who's having only one as the flag. So this is the approach that we are going to follow. And I hope this is clear. Now let's get back into PG admin to write this query, okay? Now, before I can continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find thousands of online classes related to almost any concept that you can think of. Now, personally, I'm very much interested in learning about how to make better YouTube videos, how to become more productive, how to better manage my finances. And currently, I'm also interested in how to get better at photography. Now, instead of going online and trying to learn all of these skills uh, through different resources, I could just go into Skillshare and find some fantastic classes to learn all of these skills in one single platform. For example, the YouTube success class conducted by MKBHD on Skillshare is definitely one of the best classes that you can find in order to learn about how to make better YouTube videos. It has definitely helped me. I have learned a lot of things about uh, how to uh, make better YouTube videos, uh, the lighting setup, how to edit videos, etc. And when it comes to productivity, the Mastering Productivity class conducted by Thomas Frank is definitely one of the best productivity classes that you can find online. So if you're someone who wants to learn new skills and you want to implement these new skills in your life, then Skillshare is a platform that you should definitely check out. Now, the best part is you can join Skillshare for free. You can use the link that I will be leaving in the description below to join Skillshare for free. And you can get one month of free access to all the online classes that are available on Skillshare. So definitely check the link in the description below. It's free, definitely utilize it, learn new skills, and I hope it helps. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into our content. So my very first step is to basically kind of create this flag column, right? Uh, using the lead window function. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to move this to the right. And here for now, let me first create the lead uh, window function. So I'm just going to say lead. What I need is when I'm processing this record, I need to fetch the amount from the next record, right? Lead will accept a few arguments. Uh, the first argument will be the value that it is going to display. So I'm just going to say amount, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to say over and inside my over clause, uh, since this lead is a window function, over clause is mandatory, I need to use it. Here, first of all, I need to do the partition, right? I need to do the partition based on each brand. So I can just tell partition by brand, okay? And then when I'm processing this record, I should make sure that the records are sorted in the form of year, right? So for that, I can just tell order by year and by default, it will be ascending order. That is exactly what I want. Okay, and let's say I'm just going to run this. Okay, so a new column has been created. I don't actually need this column. I just need to compare the amount from the very next record with the amount that is present in my current record, right? So I don't really need this column, but I just need to do the comparison. Hence, uh, instead of displaying the value that is written from lead, I'll just use the case statement to do the comparison of amount from the current row with the amount that I'm going to get from my lead function, right? So I can just tell case when amount this amount is the amount of my current row okay from here okay and i can just tell if it is less than the lead amount lead means the amount from the next record because by default lead will look for one record next to the current record okay i can of course make it to look for uh, many records after the current record but by default it will be one okay so i'll just leave it as it is and if the amount is greater than the amount present in the next record then i want it to be displayed like one else it should display like zero and I'm going to end my case statement. And let's say I'm going to call it like the column flag, 
Okay, so maybe just to make it more clear, I'll just move this then clause in the next line. I'll put the else part here and I'll end my case statement here. Okay, and maybe I'll just put this entire case statement into the parenthesis just to make it clear. And now I'll run it. And now you can see that I have got this flag column. So for the first record, it is telling zero because here it is less than, basically it is greater than the next record. And I'm getting one here and zero here. And I think for Samsung, this is the only, okay, there is still one problem here. That is, you can see here, the last record of Samsung, it is telling the flag as zero. Similarly, the last record of Apple, it is telling like zero. Similarly, the last record of Nokia, also it is telling like zero. Okay, now this is not exactly what I want. As I told here, uh, if the lead function does not have the next record to compare it with, by default, I want it to display like one, right? So how can I do that? So, so imagine when SQL is processing this last record, okay, using the lead function, uh, it, it's going to compare this 25,000. So this amount is 25,000 and this lead of amount is going to look for the amount from the next record, but there is no next record. So by default, it's going to return null. So this statement is going to return false, hence it's going to return zero here. But I do want it to return zero. Since there is no next record, by default, I want it to return one. So what I can do is, there are two more arguments for the lead function. So the second argument is the offset value, that is how many records next I want to compare it with. By default, it is one. And here also I want to compare with the very next record only, right? So I'm just going to keep it like one. And here, the third argument is basically the default value that gets returned if there is no next record, okay? Here, what I want to do is if there is no next record, then I want it to always return one, okay? How can I make this statement to always return one is, I can just copy this amount here, but if I leave it here, amount less than amount will still return false, right? But I want, I, I kind of want to force it to return true, right? If there is no next record. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say plus one. So it's going to compare if amount is less than amount plus one, this will always be greater than amount, right? Hence, when there is no last record, the default value that it's going to return is this one, amount uh, plus one, okay? That is this lead function is going to return amount plus one and this uh, comparison uh, expression is going to return true and the final output here will be one, okay? Now if I run this, now you can see here, all the last record here, it is returning like one. Even for the Nokia, the last record is one and for Apple, the last record is one, okay? I hope this is clear. Now we have basically done most of the things, but this still is not our final output, right? Our final output is from this result set, we only want to extract the brand whose amount has increased every year. In other words, whose flag is always one, right? So what I can do is, I can put this into a subquery, but a more neater way is to just put this inside a CTE table. So I'm just going to use the with clause with CTE as, and I'll just move this to the right. And here I'll just put the parentheses, uh, that's fine. And here what I'm just going to do is, I'm just going to say select star from brands, okay? This brands is actually my input table, the table which holds my input data, okay? So from my brands table, so let's say if I only execute select star from brands, I will get all the data from my input table, that is fine. And here the subquery that I have created, the CT, it's going to have this additional flag, right? What I want to do is, I want to only fetch the data where brands is not in, I'll just tell select brand from CTE where flag equal to zero. Okay, so what I'm doing is from this CTE table, I'm going to fetch all the brands who is having a flag equal to zero. So it's going to fetch Apple and it's going to fetch Nokia. Okay, but it will not fetch Samsung. Why? Because in any of the records that belong to Samsung, it does not have a flag zero right? So it's only going to return Apple and Nokia, right? And my final output, I'm excluding all those records, which belongs to the brands that is returned from this subquery here. Okay. So hopefully this should only return me Samsung. And now if I run this, I'm getting an error. So let's try to fix that. I think the column name is brand here. And now let me run this. And now you can see that I'm getting the final output. So this is the correct output. That is Samsung is the only brand whose amount increased every year. Okay, and this is one of the ways I have solved this problem. I hope this is clear. 
and you liked this kind of uh, videos where I am showing you the approach and uh, breaking the query into multiple different parts and then writing the query to solve it. Okay. Now all the scripts, SQL queries and data set, everything is in my blog. The link to my blog is present in the video description. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any other SQL interview queries or any other interesting queries that you would like me to make video about, definitely email me your query. Uh, my email ID is also present in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.